Good afternoon, and thank you for allowing us to present our work on the natural history of lower urinary tract symptoms in treatment-seeking women with pelvic organ prolapse. This research was conducted with support from the NIH. The baseline association of pelvic organ prolapse with overactive bladder and other lower urinary tract symptoms, or LUTs, as well as the natural history of those LUTs is not well characterized. Results from cross-sectional studies are variable, with some reporting an association between prolapse and LUTs and some reporting no association. Whether LUTs are associated with prolapse change over time is also poorly studied to date. Last, several groups have also examined the effect of prolapse surgery on OAP symptoms. Study results are conflicting. However, one systematic review determined that bladder overactivity may resolve in 40% undergoing prolapse surgery. The Symptoms of Lower Urinary Tract Dysfunction Research Network, or LEARN, was established in 2012 to increase our understanding of LUTs by identifying the important subtypes of patients with LUTs, such as women with prolapse. To the best of our knowledge, no studies have reported on the natural history of LUTs in women with prolapse compared to women without prolapse. Our primary aims were to, one, determine the baseline association between LUTs tool scores and prolapse, and two, compare the change in LUTS tool scores from baseline to 12 months in women with and without prolapse. We hypothesized that LUTS tool scores would be associated with the presence of prolapse and that LUTS tool responses would be stable over time in patients with and without prolapse. The LEARN observational cohort study included men and women over age 18 with at least one self-reported lower urinary tract symptom. Subjects were not required to be treatment naive. Information collected at the baseline study visit included aspects of their medical history, self-reported LUTs, physical exam findings, and several questionnaires. Follow-up visits occurred at 3 and 12 months. Treatment of both LUTs and prolapse were guided by the usual standard of care. The primary exposure of interest was the presence of prolapse at baseline. Prolapse was defined as maximal vaginal descent, or the greatest of pop Q points BA, BP, or C, being greater than but not including zero. The initial baseline prolapse group was considered treated or untreated at three and 12 month follow-up. The treated group included subjects who underwent prolapse surgery or a pessary fitting between the baseline visit and follow-up. The primary outcome was the LUTS tool. The LUTS tool is a 22 item validated questionnaire designed to assess the prevalence and bother of individual LUTS. In addition to reporting the total severity score, we also defined three subscales for this analysis, overactive bladder, obstructive symptoms, and stress incontinence. Repeated measures linear regression models were fit with fixed effect predictors as listed here. The LEARN observational cohort study was designed to achieve greater than 90% power to detect differences as small as 0.4 standard deviations for less prevalent comparisons, such as those with prolapse versus without. Of the 545 females enrolled in LEARN with sufficient data for analysis, 174 were excluded either due to inconsistent or missing POP-Q data. 371 individuals were included in this analysis. Of the 371 subjects, 58 or 16% had prolapse. Those with prolapse were older, more likely to report being white, had more previous prolapse surgery, and larger post-void residuals. 98% of subjects with prolapse had stage 2 or 3 prolapse. 64% of subjects with prolapse underwent either prolapse surgery or a pessary fitting during follow-up. 19% had sling surgery for stress incontinence. Conversely, significantly more subjects without prolapse had OAB treatment. This figure shows LUTs tool scores over time by prolapse group. Each individual graph represents one outcome measure, the OAB subscale, the obstructive subscale, the stress incontinence subscale, and total severity score. On the left of each graph, the blue bar represents the group without prolapse, and the red bar the group with prolapse at baseline. Three-month follow-up is in the middle portion of each graph, and 12-month follow-up is all the way to the right of each graph. For each follow-up time point, the prolapse group represented by red at baseline, is divided into untreated patients in green and patients treated with prolapse surgery or a pessary in brown. In multivariable models, 
interaction terms between prolapse groups and follow-up visits were not significant. All LUTs tool scores decreased at 3 and 12 month visits by about 4 to 14 percent, but scores did not differ between prolapse groups. In summary, LUTs tool scores, including all subscales, were not associated with the presence or absence of prolapse at baseline. LUTs tool scores decreased similarly over 12 months in patients with and without prolapse. Why did we see no difference in LUTs between those with and without prolapse? One possibility is that LUTs treatment may be as effective in women with prolapse as it is in women without prolapse. Another possibility is that, regardless of treatment status, both groups completed regular bladder diaries and attended frequent follow-up visits for this study. These actions may have a positive effect on symptoms. <clears throat> The primary strength of the study is that the information comes from a very well characterized and geographically diverse cohort. A weakness is that many subjects had to be excluded from this analysis due to missing or inaccurate POPQ data. Additionally, there may be some selection bias in this cohort. In conclusion, LUTs did not differ at baseline between women with and without prolapse in a treatment-seeking cohort. LUTs improved over time in women with treated prolapse, untreated prolapse, and without prolapse. Thank you again to the ICS for allowing us to present this study.